Hey everybody, how's it going? So welcome to We Let My Park From Scratch and welcome to what I think is going to be episode 9. It's going to be a bit of a half episode though, this isn't going to be a full we build something episode. This is going to be the episode that we're going to get ready to put this onto Steam. The reason I wanted to do this episode is because I realised I needed to do a little bit of touching up of the, the actual park itself just to make sure that it's ready and it's in, a, in an acceptable form for me to actually share it with you guys. There's a few things that I need to touch up, there's a few things that need to be tweaked and tidied up and everything. And then I sort of gave myself a list and realised that actually there's quite a lot that I need to do and I, and I wanted to show you what that looks like as opposed to just giving you the park file and it looks slightly different to how it does at the end of episode 8. Plus it also feels like it would be quite nice for episode 10 to be the one that we release it to Steam, Dub, double digits and all that. So thank you all for coming along. For those of you that are new to the series, we're building an ultra realistic uh, park in Planet Coaster thanks to the absolutely amazing work of all of the artists that do stuff for TMTK and also my experience of working at a theme park as well. So I work with the guys that design theme parks so I'm pretty familiar with how rides should be laid out and areas should be laid out and stuff like that. So if you haven't already seen the first few episodes then that will it's all explained and walked through as we build this park and you're joining us now at episode nine where the park looks like this so it's been a labor of love uh, and it's it's coming together really really nicely i really really love how this is coming together and the community as well has been really well receptive and really well receiving of the park and they've given such brilliant ideas and such brilliant insights into their own experiences and just given me ideas of, of stuff to put around and I also need to at this point thank Spike he's one of the creators of the previous reel up my ride episodes that I did um pointed something out to me about the stand-up coaster and actually Spike you are absolutely spot on uh, so if you remember back to the last episode I wasn't entirely comfortable with how this stairway was looking but I couldn't quite put the my finger on why it was causing a problem for me or why I wasn't uncomfortable Spike pointed out that there's a piece of UK legislation that says that you shouldn't be using any more than 16 steps in a stairway without a change in direction and absolutely spot on I, I did the research and yes that's exactly what it is so we, I'm just going to need to do some work on this area just to correct this I don't think it's going to need major uh, things changing it's just a case of lowering the stairs down to this way and then lowering it down again to the actual uh, bottom of the, the run here and um, I think that's all that's going to need to be done now in terms of planet coaster scale in the world there's more than 16 rises in two sections of stairway so this is going to need to be a squint and believe rather than being strict to legislation uh, kind of thing but we'll we, we'll stick it to two uh, to two rises two sections of path and, and see where that goes and see where that takes us anyway so there's a couple of precedents as well that suggest that you don't need to have a change in direction but the legislation strongly recommends that there's a change in direction so we'll stick to that as much as possible so that's one thing that i need to do anyway just to correct that from the last episode now the other things that i need to do in in this park just to clear it up and just to start getting it ready i started to do this list so there's things like um spaces for missing for posters you know things like annual pass posters and fright nights posters or halloween events posters and, and stuff like that we also need queue time boards so i've started to put the stuff around the park for maps where is one over here so i started to put it in for uh, park maps and everything but we need to tell our guests about queue times so that's the next thing that we're that we're going to do is put some kind of queue time boards around and i also need to just uh, go around and fix up some of the foliage and everything so as you already know that we're sort of intentionally leaving this area until or i had intentionally left this area until i knew what the sight line was looking like i think it's now time that we can start at least going up to the the log flume bit we know how this is now going to look so i can start finishing these areas and putting in all of the all of the foliage and stuff in and i need to go around as well and just add in the other tmtk items so as i've been progressing through the episodes i've been downloading new items and there's areas of the park that now need to be updated with these items so the brilliant suggestion of using the photocopiers of printers in the in the photo booths it's not over here yet so i need to sort of readjust this stall just to include that kind of that kind of thing in there hello uh, that kind of thing in there and so that's what this episode is pretty much going to be 
Um, I also need to put the railway station in over in the western area, but I've decided, and I'm taking the design decision on this one based on some of the other railways that I know that we've got in our portfolios. I don't want the station here to be western themed. I want it to be consistent with the theming that we've already got in place because this is Raygate Railway. So it feels like it should be the same station. So I'm going to use an altered version of the train station that's going to sit uh, on here. So we could just finish up this area then and call it done or done for now at least um, and then yeah there's just a few other like things that I want to do make sure that bins and benches are all in the right place I've been dealing with the lighting as well as I've been going along I keep every single episode I keep forgetting to show you what the park looks like at night <laughs> and the lighting has been done as part of all of this I've just never shown you so I'm going to make sure that all the lighting is spot on and then uh, that's going to be part of the, the release episode that I'm going to do and then this this ice cream stall I've been procrastinating doing this for so long and it's just a stall it's just an ice cream stall that just needs doing so we'll get that I'm not going to do anything around this side of the lake and I'm not going to do anything here this is all for future future development so when it comes to the actual release episode then, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a, a whole Tejikam episode. So whereas all of the other episodes have been me showing you around the park and showing you through the builds, just like I've done with the camera angles from all different angles, the actual release episode is going to be a park tour from the point of view of the guests so that you can just see the guest sight lines and you can see what I've intended with some of the some of the things like for example if you look on look on the top view here you go well this is just boring awful flat roof that doesn't even match here and you can sort of pick it apart really easy and go look at all these squares of flat roofs and it's not very realistic and blah, blah, blah. but then actually when you're down on the on the the park ground the actual principle of only designing what you can through only designing what your guests can see really comes into its own so things like this look you don't even know that it's a flat well you know it's a flat roof obviously because it's clearly flat but you can't see the top of the flat roof so you don't actually have to make too much of a big deal about it so um, yeah so I wanted to do a, a bit of a Tejit Cam episode so episode 9 itself isn't going to be a full episode it's not going to be don't expect you know masses and masses of things changed it's just literally the touch-up episode that I can show you what I've been working on between episode 8 and releasing on to Steam. So that's seven minutes into this episode already. I think I should probably just shut up and get on with it, right? So that's what I'm going to do and I'll see you for the first update. Here we go then, one fixed stairwell. And I promise I'm going to make this update really quick because I've got loads of other stuff to do. So all I've done is I've torn the stairwell out and I've just created this bit of an S-Bend stairwell. Uh, looking at the UK legislation, so it says that you can't have any more than 16 risers in a commercial stairway uh, without a, at least a 30 degree turn. There are some precedents that you can have where if you've got a certain gap where it's flat you can then continue on in the same direction and the idea is it's a refuge area so you have to have some kind of a refuge area for people to be able to stop and take their breath in case they can't manage the, the actual stairs themselves and the purpose this is a weird one this is more anecdotal than officially documented anywhere the purpose of having it at a 30 degree turn or at least a 30 degree turn is in case someone falls down the stairs <laughs> horrible horrible thought but in case they fall down the stairs something's going to break their fall they don't fall the entire way like i say purely anecdotal there's nothing written anywhere that suggests that that's the case but it kind of makes sense right if you fall down the stairs you're going to want something to break your fall especially if you've got something that's like this anyway um and so with the, with planet coaster it looks like you can get away with three path segments not two i tried it with two just didn't look realistic enough so i've done it with three it does equate to more than 16 risers, but as I said, when we're dealing with the Planet Coaster world, sometimes we just have to squint and suspend our disbelief. So that's what we're going to do in this instance. I think it's 21 risers in three, but then two isn't too short. So anyway, that's all I've done is I've just tidied this bit up, just made it really, really nice and simple, uh, added in the, the bins and, and, and everything. And then I've also just put in all of the bolts and everything just to tidy it up and, and make it make it look should. Uh, I've also kept the concrete pad underneath as well. It felt like this lower portion of the uh, path would probably be sitting on concrete whereas this might be actually sitting on uh, more ground than anything else. And the other thing that I noticed that I hadn't done uh, in the previous episode is, is this. So I'd forgotten to put in a fast pass main queue splitter sign with uh, the Outlaw Fury logo and everything on it like we have for the other coasters so that I've put that in now as well so I think this is pretty much stand-up coaster complete and corrected to the point that I want it to 
So, that was a really quick update. I promised I was going to keep it quick. Let's carry on. Alright then, so it's time for our next little update and what's behind the tree. And you'll probably have no surprises, no spoilers. It's a railway station. <laughs> so, as promised, there's the extension then to the actual plaza area. Uh, so all, I haven't done anything major in this area. It's no, it's no big development or anything like that. That's why this isn't done in stages. This is very much a finished, done, move on kind of uh, area. So all I've done is I've extended the plaza out and made sure that that Victorian flat roof brick uh, is all the way out to the queue line area. I've managed to bring the actual railway line out this way and then the station fits in quite nicely and this creates quite a nice little gap here actually because you've got to lower the railway line to go through the path and then raise it again but you have to have it on a flat level before you can build a station so that kind of forces your hand as to where the position of this station is going to be and it actually works out quite nicely because I wanted this in the end to actually be a bit of a barrier fence I didn't want there to be a path that comes this way and a path that comes this way because otherwise this path here serves no purpose and so I wanted to make sure that this path here had some kind of a purpose and that in the future it would come round to the back here to whatever we're going to develop at the back end of the park in this sort of area. But this railway station here also gives quite a lot or lends itself quite well to a development being here. So this could also be a second boundary wall that would be a future a future development in this area. So it actually fits in quite nicely to the to the scenery. Train the train station itself is pretty much a lift and shift from the front of the park. I've just made a few little tweaks to it just to make this area specific. So like for example the um the actual signs for the railway aren't on the roof here. I've opened up the back as well because unlike the other train station where the back served a purpose to hiding things that were behind it, you know, the maintenance area and everything, uh, this one I actually wanted you to be able to look through the park and be able to see it, especially with whatever we're going to develop at the back end. Like if it's a coaster, for example, you can imagine the coaster swooping past here at speed as you're boarding the train and scaring you witless. So... <laughs> And then I've uh, also just put the queue, and I wanted the queue to be in a slightly different configuration to the front of the front of the uh, park because I had this space that was free. It didn't feel quite right just to fill it out with uh, vegetation when the train station overlaps it. So I wanted just to bring the queue in this way, and it also then moved it out of the way to allow this bigger plaza, this bigger plaza area. And then all I've done is I've just added another planter just to accompany this other one with some trees, create some shade into this plaza area. And I've just noticed I've not done a bin. Uh, and then I've just put in some picnic benches and everything uh, just around. And then I've got all of the, the other facilities that you're going to need just dotted around. I've also bought in the original lamps from the front of the park because this, this is a bit of an extension. So it feels like this isn't supposed to be part of the western area. It's just a, a no man's land that sits in the middle. So that's all I've done. But to start to then accent the western area ready slatty um i've just bought in the refresh vending machines and everything this area wouldn't have stalls it wouldn't have a food shop it's it's not a it's not a key designated area it's just a transport hub area so vending machines are absolutely fine and i've just copied across the other vending machines that we've got here just because they were fit for purpose so it starts to give that feel for the western area whilst also still giving the feel of the front area by the way that we're using the brick on the planters and the lamps and, and everything and the train station itself so it's all like a bit of a mixed match of themes that are starting to blend and that's the idea is it's supposed to blend the areas it's not supposed to be a stark here's a western area it's supposed to sort of go from one to another so anyway that's the plaza area now all finished and, and complete and it looks quite good actually i'm quite like surprised surprised with how it's turned out i didn't think it was going to be as, as good as this especially when i was laying down the brick it just looked like a big stark open area and I didn't know how I was going to give it any kind of character but actually it doesn't really need much more character than it's already got so happy with that job done so that I think next is going to be the ice cream stall um, I need to get that off my list of to do's so should we check out how that went all right so we're really starting to fly through these now and we've got ourselves a cosmic cow shack so I was walking down the beach the other day in our very much not average 21 degree summer it's very much not that at the moment here in the UK. Um, and I saw, as I was walking down the beach, I saw this shack that I quite liked the look of. And it was an ice cream shack, so it was selling, you know, typical drinks and ice creams and stuff. And it was quite branded, not specifically to any business. It was just very much branded to ice cream. 
and I quite liked the look of it and thought I wonder if something like that would fit into Raygate Lake but still be subtle enough to fit so it's not garish, it's not outlandish, it's not right in your face but it's still obvious that they've paid to be there and this is kind of how I ended up doing it in, in Raygate Lake it's very similar to the shack that I saw so I took a couple of pictures and, and I replicated it in certain ways like these pillars and the overhang of the wood and everything and um, it's actually turned out quite quite nicely so I've used all of the, the wood effect so again it's this idea of transitioning from one area into the western area so like we've done with the train station kept that same principle we're starting to introduce the wood element we're starting to introduce the flooring and the flat ceiling flat roof and stuff what I've done there is I've also just put a trim along the outside just to give it the cosmic cow colouring so it's pretty obvious you could quite easily change the colour if you wanted to in the future so like if this branding actually ran out of contract so the contract ended you could recolor this quite easily and then all of the awnings and everything are the only things that are really branded the rest is actually very generic so they've kept it as a wood shack they've just put some cladding up they've just made it all cosmic cow branded but actually if they wanted to change then they could they just repaint and they can still reuse everything and so that's kind of how I've how I've dealt with this. And I've also just thrown around some TMTK items. I, I knew I wanted this to overhang slightly, so I knew I, it was going to be on the side of the hill, and I knew that it was going to be um, beside the railway line. So I wanted to have this idea that this shack sort of sprawled out further than the actual walls did. So this is what I've done here. I could just put the brick walls across, and then the shack sits on top, and then just the fencing to stop people going through. And this is when I then started to consider that element of guest control. So, do you either want the do you want the guests to not do something, or do you want to make it safe for them to do it, even though they shouldn't? So I've put the fences up to stop them from falling into the water and falling into the train track and falling off the edge and stuff. And then I've also discouraged people from going down there by putting in the. Um, the actual bins and signs and everything so it kind of blocks their path. I could have put chairs and everything along here and made it an, an area for someone to sit and look at the pool from the log flume and everything but no I thought it's not it's not really wide enough it doesn't really lend itself to that to that kind of feature it's just a shack it's a grab and go shack so that's kind of where I wanted it to be and so yeah I've just put the the TMTK stuff around just giving it its staff door it's a uh, pop buckets back and then a bin and because this area doesn't have a backstage area that you can hide away bins and everything it kind of feels like this area would be used as a bit of storage you can still quite obviously see it from um, from the actual guest sightline and everything but it's also quite well hidden and I saw actually in a couple of places that I've been recently that theme park related stuff that sometimes they theme parks don't make an effort to hide bins like I, I remember walking past one area on the pier and it was just bins and I thought but this is a this is a very public area and it was just full of bins I thought well that's kind of given me a bit of a precedent to say perhaps you don't really need to hide the bins I just have them on the main part and be done with it so that's kind of the, the feel that I'm going for here this this shack doesn't have a backstage area it's got so it's got the bins here instead uh, so that's really it that's the that's the actual shack itself so it looks quite nice actually so it's pretty obvious as you're walking up that the hey there's a there's somewhere to buy ice cream but it's not too obstructive and intrusive that it gets in the way and you could quite easily retheme it if the contract ran out it's sort of like it would still fit you wouldn't need to do too much work to it to remove the branding so that's kind of how i wanted it to wanted it to sit so the next part then of this phase and i think it's going to be the last part is just to do a pass through the whole of the park and just start adding in all of the additional tmtk stuff doing all of the foliage along the along the side here and making this perimeter wall actual make sense um, and just making sure that this is all ready for the the actual big reveal episode the big upload to steam so i'm going to carry on and do that and i will see you for the final update all right then so i think i'm about ready to put the phase one done for now stamp on this one so uh, i don't know if you can tell either our british summer has literally just fallen apart there's one massive storm coming over and brewing at the moment so I don't know if you can actually hear it on the recording but it is an absolute beaut of a storm so um, I wish you were here to enjoy it actually because it's proper love thunderstorms anyway park that's what we're here to do uh, so I've done the the whole pass now of everything that I wanted to do getting ready 
for the whole phase one release onto Steam. And this is the park as it stands. So I've done a bit of a foliage and theme makers toolkit sweep across the entire park. And I've added the bits in that I wanted to add in. So here are the highlights. Um, so I've gone as far as our maintenance shed on the log flume. Uh, just with all of the foliage and everything that I wanted to put in. Put a couple of bus stops in, put all of the bins and the benches all along, and the bollards, as I've mentioned in previous episodes before, along the disabled bays as well. Stop cars from running into pedestrians as they go along. So that's now done. The perimeter fence is now as I exactly as I want it, and I've also just roughed up this whole area. So this was all grass and open at one point, but I've sort of made it look a little bit more unkempt, a little bit more overgrown. There's a couple of reasons for that really. You want to sort of hide this ride area. You don't really want it to be that obvious as a ride area. And also it sort of helps to blend in this idea of why this path is here. It's not so stark, it's not such a, an obvious an obvious path. So that's all done and dusted. Happy with happy with this now. And then we move along the pathway. I've just varied the terrain again all along here just to give the bit of height variation. It's not flat anymore. Uh, and that's all the way along here. So from the guest sightline you now have a bit of variation with the height, which now makes it sort of make sense a bit more. Especially as we're on a completely flat piece of land anyway, so you want some kind of sightline variation going on. And then I swapped out the trees that were along here, so this, so these ones have now all been swapped out because these flowers are what I've used on the other side. So I wanted to bring a bit of consistency in with the entrance so that it's the same either side. And then this bit I wanted to keep relatively clear with the, the fence, but I've just dappled it out with just some of the foliage and some of the... Um, flowers and a bit of the sunken into the ground hedges and stuff just to give it a bit of bulk but otherwise it's a pretty well kept area it'd probably be a, a mown piece of grass rather than it would this side here where it's a little bit um, bordery so the idea of this one is it's supposed to be separating you from the road whereas this one it's just it's supposed to be nice you don't want it to be too cramped you don't want it to be a bit of an avenue style you want it to be nice and open because you then come in through the tree uh, into the nice wide open plaza area so i've done some changes in the plaza area uh now the biggest one that you'll notice is that i've put the signs in ready for the uh what they call the ticket information signs for the price tariffs um i don't think the graphics for the tariffs are going to be ready in time um i kind of i'm toying with the idea of throwing it open to the community to see whether uh, you guys want to design them because i know that there are some far more talented artists out there than i could ever ever draw up and I've seen some of you guys doing some of your projects outside of uh, other things that you guys do and some of you come up with the most amazing graphics and the most amazing boards and I'm tempted actually just to pay homage to the community that supported this project right from the beginning and throw it open to you guys and say come and bring your artwork into the park and be part of this experience um so I'm toying with that idea so I don't think I'm going to release this with these graphics anyway I think they're just going to be their boards there as boards ready ready to go uh, and so I've done the same on the other side as well inside the office I've just gone through and I've just added the extra bits of office clutter that I've downloaded since I built these offices so things like the phones and things like coffee cups and the folders and stuff so this is now sort of brought this back to life a little bit it, it's it was it wasn't lacking to start with but it's now got that little bit more extra extra stuff and then when we come into the business lounge uh, yeah, again, it's just a, it's just the odd touching up of stuff. So uh, a few little like cluttery I items around that you probably wouldn't notice if unless I pointed them out. But you sort of notice that they're not there if you go back and watch the other episode. So uh, it's quite clever actually. I've sort of I've sort of done it that way. Um, same way through the there we go into the actual maintenance yard. Not much has changed in here. Um, there's just a few like tidying up things. I noticed that some of the uh, road markings were too far out of the ground and, and sort of like coming down to peep level just to make sure that everything's okay there and then over this side nothing has changed uh, this is as as I left it and that's because we still need to develop this side of the park to know what's going to come in uh, come into here main plaza area then uh, I've just started to put down the spaces for the adverts so this would be like a queue time board but then I'm also going to use this same layout elsewhere for things like annual pass and 
the adverts that I wanted to do, so like the annual pass and the events. And again, I think I'm, I think I might throw it open to you guys to be part of the park, get your name in the park, and that's my way of thanking you for the support. Um, but again, I need to think about how that's actually going to how that's going to work. So watch this watch this space on that. So for now, they're just going to be blank, but they're there. They're there, ready to be represented. Uh, likewise, over here, the Eurofighter. Um, I've done exactly the same. Started to put the finer touches again. There's stuff that it's really really subtle that you don't notice have been done unless you go back and watch the episode and you think, oh yeah. That was missing and I didn't realise that was missing. So the biggest one though is, is as promised, we've now got printers for the, for the photos. So that's now that's now a thing. And then coming over this way back towards the park. Um, I'm not doing anything with this side of the lake. I'm not doing anything with this side of the lake either. As we know, this is future development, phase two stuff. So for now, this is going to be as it is Um and I'm, I'm intentionally leaving it that way. I still think I want this lake to be bigger. I still think I want this lake to come around this way a bit more. Um, it feels like the park is now starting to swamp the lake. And that's not the idea of Raygate Lake. I think I want... Anyway, I need to sleep on it. And I need to I need to sort of think about what I'm going to do for phase two and start to plan it out. So that's why I'm leaving this bit completely blare, there. I don't want to finish off the um, the runners and everything knowing that actually I might be changing all of that. I'm just not going to waste my time doing it. So I'm just going to leave that as it is. But what I have done is I've also put some of the foliage and everything along here. So I've, I've sort of cluttered it up a little bit. Um, again, I kept it nice and clean because that's how I wanted this area to be. And I've always wanted that, that to be that way. But I've just cluttered it up with a bit of flower color, uh, a few sort of like spots of growth, a few more hedges, a bit of tat and mulch and stuff. So that's looking that's looking good and I quite like this view actually that you've got oh I've done the bits along the railway as well so I started to sort of overgrow the railway a little bit along the along the perimeter edge here and I quite like this this view now actually this is quite a, an interesting view because you've got essentially three three or four things to look at so you've got the log flume that's coming down here you've got the cosmic cow you've got the railway line and then you've got the lake and then you've got the bridge so this is actually quite a good focal point this is oh and across the lake as well you've got the Eurofighter so it's actually quite a subtle like viewpoint that you don't really notice it until you actually stop and pay attention to your surroundings um so yeah then coming through this way i've just put through again all of the foliage that i've missed out all along here just to start to bring this bring this to life i quite like this hill as well actually this is quite a nice little hill to look down this is this is nice little slopey slopey style hill uh, and then over in the western area but the western area it was pretty much pulled together to start with um it was always going to be looking good and looking its best here. So because we, we'd already completed this with the, the most recent TMTK stuff that we had. So I just needed to do some real slight touches up. And oh, as the autosave kicks in, good timing. Uh, here we are. I've done the bin. So the bin that I missed is done. Um, so guys, with that in mind, thank you so much for watching this episode. I know it was a bit of a, as the autosave is, is going, I know it was a, a, a bit of a shorter episode and that was the whole plan. I wanted to show you all of the little things that I was changing between episode eight and actually releasing it to Steam. So that's why this one is, is around. So thank you for watching. You know what to do if you want to know when the Steam episode comes out. You guys as subscribers will be told that first. You will get notifications of the video going out before I start promoting it. <clears throat> So if you want to uh, know when that's coming out, you know what to do. Absolutely know what to do. So guys, thank you so much. I'm literally going to film the next episode as soon as I publish this one. So I'm going to go away, edit this one, and then film the next episode ready for it to go out. So you should have this probably pretty soon. Um, so take care of yourselves. I will see you very shortly.